Hi again, everybody. And uh, th today we're going to do something a little different. And we will revisit the Chinese drama Rise of the Phoenixes, which I gave a first impression on some time ago. I only watched a few episodes before things, personal things came up, and I couldn't really finish anything at that time. And sadly for me, it was put on the shelf and forgotten. That was when user Mary Tayton reminded me that it existed. I'm so very happy that she did. When I gave my first impression of this video, I was excited to see which direction they went with having a female lead primarily disguised, disguised as a male for almost all of the episodes I watched. I wanted to see what they did with the dynamic of having a lead male character who was not ultra aggressive or stone cold emotionless. Overall, I was liking the vibe. Okay, so first off, the drama has over 40 episodes. So there's a large amount of story to go over. I did not see that when I did the first impression video. So I watched until I felt was a good point to end the first arc, if you will. Now, I don't know if it is an arc end, but episode 20 was the perfect spot to at least pause and give a final review on it. It turned out to be a very political drama. Conspiracy, treachery, betrayal, murder. So much awesome suspense and drama. I'm not usually a fan of political dramas at all. I originally thought it was going to be a romance with unconventional roles. and uh, Where I thought Prince Chu or Nin Ying, lead character, was going to be an observer with a soft heart. Turns out that he has more intelligence and loyalty than the rest of his brothers. Yet he still has the strength to allow himself the emo to feel emotions. Where I thought Xi Wei was a cocksure ice beast, she turns out that she's just an impulsive youth who yearns for the freedom to live life on her terms. Now, I'll be honest, coming from a non-Chinese speaker, I found the politics involved hard to follow at first. It almost got to the point that I didn't, that I didn't want to even deal with it. I admit this may have been, a, been due to my late night laziness, so I brewed up some coffee and burned episodes. However, as fair warning for those in my same language boat, it didn't help almost all the characters had two names they are known under, which just added to my confusion. So I made a quick list here of just the prince's titles and real names to get you started or to help you guys if you decide to watch it. In the description box, I have listed some of the key characters and the names they've used so far, at least regarding episodes 1 through 20. Now, along with, the ver along with that, I give a very brief description without any spoilers, hopefully. As I review the story, I will use the birth name of the main character, which is Ning Yi, and use the title names for all the other princes when I can. For the story... I will do this as effectively as I can without giving you too many spoilers. I know personally, if I know, if I learn anything about any type of thing or event happening in a show, I honestly just don't want to watch it at all. So I don't want to ruin it for anybody. So here I go at attempting to give you guys a brief rundown of the story. Emperor of Tansheng fathered five princes and was crowned 18 years before the drama takes place. He had the help of his five sons to rise to power. Ning Chuan, Ning Shen, Ning Chao, Ning Gao, and youngest Ning Yi. Prince Chu or Ning Yi was just eight years old when this occurred, but he played the biggest role of all. Fast forward to the present, the eldest son, Ning Chuan, is crowned prince. Ning Yi has just been released from prison. Ning Kao, one of the brothers, was murdered in a plot. Eight years prior, Prince Yan loyally serves his father, the emperor, and the brother, crowned prince, but he has the ambition bug, which 
uh, may end up harming him in the future. Ning Yi only wants to clear the name of his dead brother. The whole time he was in prison, he was making connections and plots so that he could as so that as soon as he was released from prison, he could bring his brother's betrayers to justice and clear his name. Ning Yi's only real ambition is to expose Crown Prince for what he is. So, we're taking on a journey that includes many different faces. One person that stands out to Ning Yi is Feng Shi Wei. She is a headstrong and impetuous woman who behaves without forethought to her actions. Yet, this is exactly what Ning Yi is attracted to. She seems to, she seems to live life free of burden. And this behavior eventually bites her in the ass and she learns some hard lessons. I can't forget to talk about the cinematography. Beautiful sets and the costumes are all so perfectly tailored. It is a historical drama and of course this wasn't skimped on. From the guard's armor to the courtesan's beautiful gowns, it's all so very authentic. <laughs> As another extra I put in the description box, I have put in a very, very short, a very simple timeline of what has been occurring or what has occurred in the drama between episodes 1 and 20 again. Oh, I'm really enjoying this series. I never thought I would say such a thing, especially for a political genre drama. This is by far one of the best Chinese dramas I have seen. It's been a while since I was even into Asian dramas of any kind. Apparently, this drama is going is doing well everywhere since its score on IMDb is 8.9 out of 10 and 98% on Google user ratings. As for my rating, I'll give it a 2.5 strawberries. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for stopping by. I love y'all so much. If you haven't done so already, please be so kind and subscribe, be my light, and leave a like. And it would be so swell if you clicked the bell. See you all next time. Bye!